17, verses 11 through 17. In the book of St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 17. And the word of God reads, And a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? You may be seated. I want to read that 17th verse again. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I want to take for our thought today lessons learned through affliction. Amen. Lessons learned through affliction. When we look at the word affliction, it means something that causes great physical or mental distress. It can be troubles, burdens, hardships, some problem, misfortune that weighs heavily upon one's heart. In life, we have to deal with our share of afflictions. Some will be light, some will be heavy. But it's important for us to understand that it's in our affliction that the Lord deals with us. There are many lessons that can be learned from our afflictions. Your afflictions can humble you. Can I get a witness here today? Your afflictions can strengthen you. Uh, your afflictions can help you to be compassionate of what somebody else is going through. And let's face it, many of us would never come to God unless it was for the things that we go through in life. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. Whenever uh, things are well, people go on about their business. But problems have a way of stopping you, causing you to pause, amen, to think and to take notice. So there are a lot of Issues, a lot of problems that we have to deal with in life, stress on the job, uh, we have relationship problems, heartache problems, friendship problems, we have individuals that are going through sickness themselves, and then we have those that are caring for those that are sick, and so uh, we have problems after problem. And a lot of these problems, uh, they stick with you. Amen. You go to bed, uh, the problem goes with you. You wake up in the morning, the problem goes with you. Sometimes you wish you could give the problem away, but sometimes it just doesn't go anywhere. It just stays with you. But uh, we should thank God that we have a God that specializes in dealing with our problems. Amen. And so the Lord, he knows everything about us, and God knows how much we can take. And then at the same time, the Lord knows that we need help. 
Amen. Because he's the one that wants us to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. Sometimes we try to cast them upon one another, but we can't take it. Can I get a witness here? We be backing up saying, look, you're coming to me too much. Uh, but the Lord wants us to cast our cares upon him. Amen. Because he cares for us. As a matter of fact, the Lord, uh, he has a place of refuge for us. And what David, you know, he spoke about he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. My God in him will I trust. And then David, uh, he wrote and he left it on record. He said, it was good for me that I had been afflicted. He said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. He said, but now have I kept thy precepts. In other words, he recognized his affliction as being a teacher. Amen. As being a corrector, as being a helper to him. And sometimes we, as children of God, we have learned from our own mistakes, our own hardships, the afflictions that we have caused upon ourselves. Uh, some of us, we have bumped our heads over and over and over again until we made up our minds that I'm not bumping my head anymore. Amen. You decided, look, what I'm doing wrong, it's time for me to correct. Amen. I've been spinning my wheels long enough. I've been going in the wrong direction long enough. I've been doing uh, things that are contrary to God long enough. Now it's time to clean up my act. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not winning. I'm, I'm, I'm losing. Every time I try to get ahead, I can't get ahead. It just seems like I'm being pulled back down. Now it's time for me to start doing some correcting. Amen. Time for me uh, to start getting my house in order. It's time for me to start cleaning myself up. You know, uh, time out for me pointing the finger and then blaming others for things that I'm doing myself. But now it's time for me uh, to, to put my hands to the plow and ask God to help me. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. And, and so what you have gone through have helped you. What you have gone through has humbled you and has called you to recognize that you need God. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. Drugs ain't going to do it. Alcohol ain't going to do it. Amen. You need somebody that's going to help you. Can I get a witness here? You need somebody that's going to lift you from the state that you're in and put you on a solid rock. Amen. And so uh, the Bible even says, and we know all things work together for good for them that love the Lord, to them that are the called according to his purpose. And so we thank God that the Lord, uh, in his wisdom, he knows how uh, to teach us. He knows how to uh, lay burdens upon our heart. He knows how to instruct us uh, because the Lord is the teacher. And I come to tell you, uh, there are some things that you can go through in life uh, that will cause you to want to change. Can I get a witness here today? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. There's some weights that you can carry and things that you have in your life that you have to deal with. Uh, that will cause you to say, look, I've got to make my burdens light. Hey, man, I'm, I'm trying to carry this load all by myself and don't have nobody to carry it with me. And now it's time for me to start laying aside these weights <laughs> so that I can move on and have some sanity. Can I get a witness here today? And so there are things that we have gone through uh, in life that has caused us to wake up. Amen. Calls us to look at reality. Calls us to, to make life-changing decisions. And I thank God that God knows how to help us uh, to make those decisions. That's why none of us uh, should get to the point that uh, we're trying to run from God. 
Amen. We need the Lord. I don't care how smart you think you are or uh, how intelligent or how shrewd you think you are. <laughs> Amen. The devil is out there just waiting on you. <laughs> Amen. And I come to tell you, <laughs> for all you so-called hip folk, cool folk, <laughs> you know, you got a whole lot of cool folk, you know, y'all think <laughs> uh, that being around Jesus is <laughs> a waste of time. <laughs> But I come to tell you, the devil will have you so far out in the wilderness, honey, in the wilderness of your mind, in the wilderness of the madness of your life, you'll wish that you were in the presence of God. Oh, can I get a witness here? Because, honey, when the devil gets you out there on his turf, oh, yeah, he'll get you out there. He'll serenade you and dance you and wine you and dine you and have you spinning around in circles and dreaming all of these false dreams and then all of a sudden he'll pull the cloak away from you and then you find yourself dancing with a beast can I get a witness here some beast that comes to destroy you that's why the Bible says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and destroy but the Lord has come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly <laughs> oh, yeah, as we take a look at the word of God here, the Bible tells us about a man that had two sons. <laughs> and the youngest son said, Father, <laughs> divide unto me my inheritance. <laughs> and so the father, he divided between the youngest son and the oldest son uh, their inheritance. The Bible uh, lets us know that the oldest son, uh, no doubt he, he was wise. You know, he, he, he stayed in the house with his inheritance. <laughs> Uh, but the Bible says the youngest son <laughs> took everything that he had <laughs> and he went out and he wasted it <laughs> in riotous living. <laughs> Somebody say, preacher, what is riotous living? <laughs> it's about everything you can imagine. <laughs> can I get a witness here? He just went out and <laughs> took what he had. He just squandered it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Had plenty, <laughs> but he squandered it. You know, sometimes <laughs> it's a shame. <laughs> how people can have it all together and then <laughs> they can lose it all. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> Amen. Make you think, man, with everything that you have, <laughs> you ought to be able to build upon what you got. <laughs> oh, but there's some people that take what they have and it can be a blessing <laughs> and they'll take that blessing and they'll <laughs> throw it away <laughs> and that's what he did he threw it away and <laughs> he wasted it in riotous living <laughs> no doubt he was hanging out <laughs> in the red light district hanging out with the wrong crowd <laughs> amen going places where he should not have been going no doubt <laughs> he was peeping and creeping <laughs> can I get a witness and sneaking and hiding <laughs> amen in places where he should not have been but I come to tell you honey, you can tip in places but yeah, there's going to come a time that what you do in the dark is going to be exposed can I get a witness here oh, yeah, some folk try to hide what they're doing because they don't want nobody to know but I come to tell you there'll come a time when whatever you're creeping you know some people they tip using drugs you know they tip <laughs> don't want nobody to know so they pop a little peels here and pop a little there and, <laughs> and then they act like they're reserved or they're taking a little snort here and a, a little snort there but I come to tell you <laughs> that when you keep doing the same thing <laughs> there's going to come a time <laughs> that what you're snorting and what you're taking and <laughs> what you're popping is going to bite you <laughs> can I get a witness here <laughs> amen what you do casually <laughs> will begin to take over you <laughs> and before you know it you'll get the attitude <laughs> of I don't care <laughs> and honey then you'll get reckless in what you're doing <laughs> and before you know it you find yourself hanging and running and <laughs> doing everything you drop your guard uh, things that you were once reserved in you're no longer reserved but now you're letting it all hang out can I get a witness here and then you wonder why folk talking about you wonder why your business is all out that's because you let it out can I get a witness here amen you can only 
creep for so long. You can only sneak for so long. But then it's going to come back and begin to surface. And sometime it'll take over you. And it'll take over you so much that it'll have you acting strange among your family members. Can I get a witness here today? And they'll be saying, there he goes again. There she goes again, acting all funny. Can I get a witness here? Acting all out of character and doing things that they have no business doing. Sometimes you think you're hiding, but honey, you can't hide. Can I get a witness here? God will pull the cover from off you. Can I get a witness here? And that's what that young man did. The Lord pulled the cover from off of him. And there he found himself out there and he found that when he got to a certain point in his life no man would give to him and there he ended up in the hog pen first he was feeding the hogs and then it wasn't too long after that he began to eat the same food that the hogs ate and honey when he got to thinking about the state that he was in and how he had gone from a lofty state to ending up in the hog pen eating the slop that the hogs ate the Bible says it was there that he came to himself can I get a witness here today oh thank you Jesus God knows how to talk to you God knows how to communicate with you amen God knows how to lay certain things on your mind can I get a witness here the Lord will let you know honey did you can be in the gutter but it's time for you to come on out the gutter amen so the Lord began to deal with him while he was in the gutter while he had left his house and now he was in the hog pen eating something that the hogs ate and so here it was that he came to himself the light came on and said man what am I doing here down here in the hog pen when I've got a better life in store for me can I get a witness here uh, so he learned some valuable lessons in the hog pen amen he learned that you can have everything one moment and you can lose it all overnight can I get a witness here today? Oh, yeah. Some of you folk that's got it going on, you know, you have prospered and you seem like you're in a certain position. Hey, Amen. Honey, you can be up one moment and you can be down the next. Don't let prosperity blow your mind. Can I get a witness here? Don't let your being elevated or your being raised up or your being so-called promoted. Amen. Blow your mind. Well, he learned that you can have it one moment and then the next minute you can lose it all. He learned that what you think is important is not really important. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. What you think is important is not really important. Oh, yeah. He thought it was important to be out on his own and to be living the kind of life that he want to live. That's, that's why a lot of folk think like that. Oh boy, I just can't wait till I get grown. I just can't wait till I get out of here. I just can't wait till I can leave this place. Hey Amen. When I leave my mama, I'm going on about my business. Honey, I'm getting out of this, this hell hole. Can I get a witness here? Hey, I'm going out there. I'm going to live. Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing because I'm going to be grown and gone. Can I get a witness here today? Oh, but he learned that what he thought was in important was not important and it's a blessing to have a bed to sleep in can I get a witness here it's a blessing to have food in the cupboard it's a blessing to have clothes on your back it's a blessing to have your right mind can I get a witness here how many of y'all know what I'm talking about it's a blessing to be able to thank God for the things that you have and not to be worried about what everybody else has it's a blessing when you can wake up in the morning and give God the glory and say thank you Lord come on and give God some praise and say thank you 
Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he learned what it was like <laughs> to be in a position <laughs> where you couldn't even find no help. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> oh, yes. Have y'all ever been out there <laughs> where you really, really needed help, <laughs> but yet wouldn't nobody help you? <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> oh, yeah, some folk have burned bridges. <laughs> Amen. You can't get help from mama. <laughs> you can't even get help help from daddy you can't get help from your sister your brother and when your cousin see you coming they run the other way because they don't even want to be bothered with you because you didn't burnt those bridges can I get a witness here today oh well he learned from being in a position where he couldn't even find nobody to help him and then he learned what it was like to truly be lonely oh Oh my God from glory. How many of you ever been lonely? Amen. Lonely, lonely. Amen. Lonely. Hallelujah. Nobody to talk to. Nobody to really understand you. Nobody to see the frustration and the burden of your heart. Amen. He knew what it was like to really be lonely. And I come to tell you, loneliness, Lord, it'll break your heart. Can I get a witness here? Oh, yeah, loneliness. <laughs> Amen. Looking, <laughs> but just can't find. Never <laughs> being satisfied within yourself. <laughs> but he learned what it was like <laughs> to be lonely. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and then he also learned <laughs> not to take things for granted. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> Certain things you can't take for granted. <laughs> Amen. If God is blessing you, you better learn <laughs> how to say thank you. <laughs> Amen. Can I get a witness here? It don't have to be the great things, honey. It can be the small things that you have to deal with every day. You better learn how to open up your mouth and just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for my living quarters. I thank you for the home I have. I thank you for my mother, my father. I thank you that they get on my nerves sometimes. Lord, I thank you that they push the buttons and have me all set but I'm not going to complain I'm going to give you the praise and I'm going to give you the glory because I could be in a much worse place come on and give God some praise Come on and give God some glory. <laughs> so he learned <laughs> how to be thankful. <laughs> and then he also learned <laughs> that pride goes before destruction <laughs> in a haughty spirit <laughs> before a fall. <laughs> and he learned, honey, <laughs> that you can get caught up in your dreams. <laughs> and your dreams will take you <laughs> places that you really don't want to go. <laughs> you can be strutting around like a peacock. <laughs> Can't nobody tell you nothing uh, because you feel within yourself uh, that you have finally arrived. Uh, but I come to tell you, pride, uh, it goes before destruction uh, in a haughty spirit, uh, before a fall. Uh, can I get a witness here today? Uh, a whole lot of folk uh, have been out there in false dreams, uh, dreams where they've been lifted up and uh, can't nobody tell talk to them. Can't nobody even rationalize with them because their head is all up in the cloud and they're walking around. Can't take instruction. Can't nobody talk to them because they think they got it all together. But honey, you can have it all together and you can be loaded with your pride. But I come to tell you, pride goes before destruction in a haughty spirit before a fall can I get a witness here today and he learned that most of all that when you get out there on the deep end can I get a witness here because of the error of your ways and you find yourself a long way from God can I get a witness that it doesn't matter how far you're off from the law the law 
God will still hear your cry. Because the Lord said, if my people, which are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, he said, then will I hear from heaven. I forgive their sins and heal the land. Well, there he was down there in the hall pit, and he learned these valuable lessons. He said, I'm down here a long way from home. I thank God that he woke me up. He said, it's time for me to get up from where I am and eat some humble pie. Can I get a witness here today? And I come to tell somebody, don't be ashamed to say you're sorry. Don't be ashamed to humble yourself. Don't be ashamed to ask God for forgiveness. Can I get a witness here? I messed up, Lord. I did the wrong thing, Lord. I went to the wrong place. My mind was messed up. I ate the wrong things. I ate from the wrong table. And now I'm down. And I'm disgusted because of the decisions that I've made. He said, belong. Lord, I'm going to humble myself before you because I'm not hurting nobody but myself. And so he humbled himself right where he was. And he said, I'm coming back and I'm going back with a humble heart. Oh, can I get a witness here? Time out for being exalted. Time out for being proud. Time out for having my head all over in the clouds. Time out for being arrogant. Time out for being stiff. Time out for being stubborn. It's time to humble myself under the mighty hands of God that I might be exalted. So the Bible says he came to himself. Got up right where he was. Had the stench of the hawk pin upon him. Can I get a witness here today? He said I'm going Going back home. I know I messed up, but I'm going back home. I know I failed, but I'm going back home. I know that I've got hallelujah guilt in my mind, but I'm going back home. No time to be proud, no time to be exalted. It's time to go back and get my mind back. It's time to go back and get my sanity back. It's time to go back where I can find some peace, where I can find some contentment. It's time to go back where I can lay my head and have some rest. Can I get a witness here? So he got his vision and said, I'm going back home. And so he started out with the stench of the hawk pin upon him. And the Bible says, that the father looked and saw him coming down the road and as he was coming the father ran to meet him and he put his loving arms around him and the man said father I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son you don't have to put me in the high spot but just make me as one of the highest servants I'm coming down humble I'm lowering myself I've made my mistakes but my mistakes Mistakes have taught me I can't do it my way. It's got to be your way. Can I get a witness here today? And the Bible says that the father, when he got home, he told the servants, put a robe on his back, put shoes on his finger, put a ring on his finger, put shoes on his feet, because this is my son that was a 
lost but now he's found let's kill the fatty calf it's time to have a party can I get a witness here every time somebody makes up in their mind after they messed up after they've been in the rut after they've been in the hall pit and they've been in the hell hole but when they make up their mind that they're coming out and they're going back home and they're going back to God God's got a ring for you God's got a robe to put on your back God's got a blessing that he wants to put on you that can't nobody put on you come on and give God some praise and say yes Lord God's got a blessing he wants to put on you lessons learned from affliction can I get a witness here oh yeah he learned I just can't have it my way I gotta do it God's way I done messed up long enough I've been doing it my way long enough it's time to go back and get my mind back it's time to go back and get my sanity back it's time to go back and get my life back it's time to go back and get my joy back it's time to go back and get my praise back my peace back my happiness back my contentment back it's time to go back and get my right mind lessons learned lessons learned through affliction affliction a teaching trouble a teaching can I get a witness here today? Many of you have learned through your affliction that you just can't keep doing it the wrong way and be successful. Can I get a witness here today? Many of y'all learned that you just can't, you just can't keep doing it the wrong way. Yeah, it's time to clean your house up. <laughs> time to take me some Ajax and uh, some, uh, some scrubber bubbles. <laughs> Can I get a with some Tide? Hey man, it's time me to get me some Briscoe or whatever. Hey man, and go to waxing and go to cleaning and go to getting in the hard places. Cause it's time for me to get my right, my mind back. Got for me to get my heart right. The Lord will teach you. Can I get a witness? Just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't care what you do, it ain't going to work unless God's in it. Can I get a witness here? Uh -huh. I don't care what you do. Some people want to be slick. They want to be sneaking and creeping and peeping and they want to be the hustler. They want to be the gangster. Y'all need to rebuke the devil. Y'all need to start rebuking him. Can I get a witness here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was teaching Bible class the other day, and one of my members, he told me, he said, hey, he said, Pastor, the devil had me. The devil had him dreaming putting dreams in his head. Can I get a witness here? Having him doing things that he knew he wasn't supposed to do. And so he confessed it in Bible class and he told us what the devil had on his mind. Can I get a witness here today? He confessed it. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil had him uh, thinking some things that were unthinkable. <laughs> Can I get a That's where the devil, he'll play with your mind. Can I get a witness here today? <laughs> and you know what he'll tell you? You know, you'll get away with it. So all you can see is prospering, riding, riding hard. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Riding in your Porsche, riding in your in your uh, 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 your special car, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You even had it made up. You didn't see yourself riding and leaning with gold chains all on your neck. 
Can I get a witness here? Money bulging out, out of your pocket. But what the devil don't show you, he don't show you locked up in jail. Behind bars. Thinking now, if I had a made a left turn, then they wouldn't have caught me. If I had to made the, if I had to made, if I just hid up under the bushes, then maybe I would have got away. Somebody needs to say, devil, you a liar. Amen. Somebody needs to just go to rebuking those dreams, rebuking those lies. Somebody need to tell the devil, devil, get out of my mind, get out of my thoughts. Lessons learned through affliction. He learned he just couldn't have it his way. Can I get a witness here? Amen. So he humbled himself and went back to his father, which represents God. Can I get a witness here? There's no place like being at home. Say, ain't, ain't no place like being like home, being at home. Tell you, say, neighbor, say, neighbor. It's a blessing to have God on your mind. Tell them, say, neighbor. It's a blessing to have God dealing with you. Mm, tell them, say, neighbor. It's a blessing to be able to pray. Uh, say, neighbor. It's a blessing to be in the house. Ha, say, neighbor. It's a blessing to have your right mind. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some glory. Thank you, Lord. That young man said, look, it's time out. Time out for me faking it. Can I get a witness here? It's time out for me faking it. Trying to act like I got it going on when I don't have it going on. It's time for me to go back to my main source. Time for me to go back to the one that can help me. <laughs> time for me to go back to the one that can lift me. <laughs> time to go back to the one that can deliver me. <laughs> Get me my right mind. <laughs> I've been in the hog pen long enough. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all know the Lord will give you a praise? He'll give you a shout. He'll give you a dance. He'll give you a new mind. How many of you know the Lord will bless you? Lessons learned through affliction. He learned some valuable lessons. But the greatest lesson he learned is that there's nothing like being in the hands of Jesus. Can I get a witness? There's nothing like being in the hands of Jesus. Nothing like being in the arms of God. For all you bad folk out there, all you gangsters, And you think you got it going on? There's a whole lot of gangsters that would rather be in the, in the arms of Jesus than to be in the situation they're in. Can I get a witness here today? I talked to him. You talked to gangsters? Yes, I have talked to him. And I tell you, some of y'all think that, you know, gangsters are hard and stuff like that. But you got some gangsters out there, they got a whole lot of sense. Can I get a witness here? Mm-hmm. And they got a whole lot of them out there. They know they need God. Amen. They know they need God. And, they, and they're, 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 they're not happy with a lot of the things that they're doing. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. I've had many that have talked to me. Many that have come and let me know that they need the Lord in their life. Hallelujah. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with accepting the fact that you need God in your life. Out here pretending and, 
and, and, and, and, and faking and going through the motions of trying to be something. Honey, the devil just waiting on you. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. And you can't get away. Because the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in what? They're everywhere. He holding the evil and the good. And the next time y'all get tempted and y'all think y'all y'all getting away with something, you better do some real serious looking. I'm going to tell you, they got eyes everywhere. I say eyes everywhere. They got all these cameras out here and phones, cell phones, cameras, and and then you, you think you're sneaking places and stuff like that, and folks see you. Can I get a witness? And you know what? Not only do they see you, they got a picture of you too. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you better watch what you do. You tell them, neighbor, somebody's watching you. Lessons learned. Lessons learned. Through affliction. Amen. God is a teacher. Somebody need to jump up right now, run down to this altar and say, I'm coming, Jesus. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I just want to be close to you. I just need your help, Lord. I need your sanity. I need your soundness of mind. I need you, Lord, to give me strength. I need you, Lord, to help me to walk the way you want me to walk. 